welcome to Therabytes, where we bring you bite-sized episodes, each one a piece of the puzzle that helps to explain the therapy world, the research behind it all, and how it relates to families. Hello, my name is Dr. Dana Poole. I'm a physiotherapist and the clinical lead at the Healthy Strides Foundation. It is my privilege to be hosting this podcast, one that is directed for parents of children with neurodisabilities. We hope to be able to answer some of your questions through this format. But to navigate our way through these big questions, we have the one and only, the lovely Noresha co-hosting this podcast. Welcome, Noresha. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> How are you this morning? I am very well today. Thank you very much. It's good to be back in the studio. It's good to that's, have a chat again. That's good to hear. Yeah, that's it's always good. good. Yeah. I feel like it's so nice just to be able to like, like I like to chat, mm. but I don't want to distract people in the office. Yeah. So here we just get to sit, we just get to oh, chat. Yeah, like no, it's, it's just permission true. just to chat. I love it. It's so good. And we <laughs> have is. so many sweet treats in the office today. So oh. um, yeah, looking forward to that and cups of tea and chatting. Definitely. <laughs> Look, um, nice. I do have something really cool to be able to share with everyone today. And I thought it was really funny because um, I I feel like I do this mm-hmm. all the time. I'll see if anyone relates to it. So new research has uncovered that there are unexpected benefits of positive secrets. So did you know that having positive secrets is actually really good for you. So there's like, so what it means is, is a positive secret is like usually something that's about uh, someone else that's really, really good. Yep. And you've got to keep it because, you know, it's, you're under embargo, mm. you can't say anything about it. But um, when you have the intention to keep positive information from others, it actually increases your feelings of energy. Yeah. And more importantly, the intent to share, so you're mm. going to be able to tell them, mm. has an independent positive effect on energy. I so I guess it's excitement, right? It's excitement, excitement to share the good news. Yeah, and it's excitement uh, about a good thing about someone else. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's less about yourself. It's not selfish. Yeah. It's like, yeah, being happy for other people's yeah, successes. It's probably like being on a high, yeah? yeah? Yeah, I think so. And yep. this isn't just a small study. This is done over a series of five experiments recruiting 1,800 participants mm. aged between mm. 18 and 78. Young, old? Oh, yeah. We all good? Yep. Big range. Yeah. That's pretty good. So like if the uh, having to keep a secret may not be a negative one that mm. is a bad thing about someone else because I think that's probably called gossip. <laughs> 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 yep. But may it be a positive thing because uh, whilst it is celebrating someone else, it's actually really good for you. They like, feel yeah. energetic and it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, spread, it's, so, it's like spreading... Yeah, it's spreading the good feelings, really. Yeah, good feelings. Yeah, yeah. You really need that more in this lifetime. I think so. Yeah. So, uh, look, I really liked it. It was it was published in the <laughs> Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. So, let's keep those positive secrets coming. <laughs> positive vibes. <laughs> positive vibes. Let's do that. Well, cool. that was my Did You Know That? What have you got mm. for me today, Narasha? Well, today's more of a discussion. Uh-huh. Um, you know, obviously, it's a, an issue. I'm sure lots of families out there are experiencing. Yeah. And their children are on medication uh-huh. um, every day, Yeah, multiple times during the day that yeah. they need to take. Yeah. Well, my boy's in that situation. Uh-huh. So um, he was complaining. I mean, current before he was only on two sets of medication, mm-hmm. which is basically for painkillers. Uh-huh. And the other one is to dumb, dumb down the dystonia that he has. Yeah, sure. So... Um, a few months ago, he complained that he was getting more feelings, uh, more pain. Okay. And it was like a recent Botox treatment that's happened. Usually his pain comes about when it's close to six months and it's renewal yeah. time for uh-huh. Botox. Uh-huh. But this was like straight in after a month, he was already complaining about it. Right. <clears throat> so obviously I got tried to get in touch with um, our specialist. Yes. With regards to his um, cerebral palsy condition. Mm-hmm. Um. And so they thought, well, usually, I mean, he's not a person that would just complain about no. pain. So when he, he does, yeah. it like alerts everybody. Yeah, for sure. So then his doctors um, prescribed another medication for painkillers uh-huh. just to obviously dumb it down even yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. And um, it took a while for things to start being noticed. But the first thing that, that triggered my um, questions yeah. was... Uh, his school teacher. Yeah, okay. His school teacher was saying that, oh, he's very lethargic. Uh-huh. Sits back in his chair, which is unusual for yeah. him because usually he's upright or like a little bit bent over, but yeah. he's usually excited to do things. Yeah. And then um, his problem solving uh-huh. or questionnaire time, wow. usually he's up, his hands are up, yep. you know, wanting to be 
answering questions. But this particular time, she noticed, or she's noticed a few times, that he puts his hand up. Uh So he's alert in the fact that he wants to answer the question. But by the time it takes him longer to process things, right? right? and then by the time he was wanting to answer the question, it's kind of lost it again. Yeah, right. So that was a major concern. That was alarm bells for me because it's never usually like that. It's not characteristic. No, that's right. So it's not a norm. Yep. And then um, at home he's just complaining about... um, Tiredness, being uh-huh. lethargic all the time, uh-huh. and he's not having a conversation as much as oh, he used to be. Okay. He's such a chatterbox when he really wants to be. Yeah. Um, so there were all kind of signs of, you know, what's going on? Yeah. What's this medication really happening? Yeah. Um, is it really working? Yeah. So all those things ran through my mind. Yes. So I guess here, hoping there are families out there experiencing the same things, but what are the steps that we need to take? Yeah in order to resolve the issue? Sure. And will, can it be resolved, you know, kind of like straight away? Do yeah. we need to wean off the medication or yeah. not? Yeah. Yeah. So I was no, thinking that's... A that's really good, gosh, that's such a good question though because yeah. medication is one of the things that um, is... Well, first of all, medication is to address an issue mm-hmm. and when it comes to pain, pain is one of those things that we've spoken about in the podcast yeah. before. It's just it's, we take it seriously right. and I don't know how many times I've spoken to parents where they go, look, they, my child just has a high pain threshold. So mm-hmm. by the time they complain of pain, like it's real Yeah. Um, and that sometimes has to do with their sensation, you know, they don't mm. feel it as much or they've just learned to put up with it for so long yeah. and, and that's not okay. Right. So by the time they're telling you something is uh, really uncomfortable for them, it, it's important to take seriously. So number yeah. one, you've done absolutely the right thing to, co- to go, oh, th- this is not like you mm-hmm. uh, and I need to follow this path of understanding why it is. Yep. Um, and especially when it's uncharacteristic. I think when it's mm-hmm. not like them and then suddenly something does come up, it yep. is cause for just like, let's look into what it is. And we spoke about that a few episodes ago about, you know, is my child regressing? Like what could this be related Mm. to? It just starts starts that puzzle of going, okay, what do I need to start to explore? Yep. And pain is one of those things that's just a trigger to, f- to try to figure it out. And that's okay. really important. Now, medications for that often, particularly when they relate to tone, mm. what, like I'm not a specialist that prescribes pain medication, of course, but I've worked really closely with the doctors yep. and the physios and the teams that do do that. And the number one thing they often talk about is a lot of these medications, uh, sometimes they can't increase the dosage enough because it can make them quite sleepy. Right. So the high higher you put it, whilst it can reduce the tone, like yeah. dystonia, and yeah. it can reduce pain, yeah. it has other side effects. Yeah, right. And that's that constant balance that the doctors are trying to play. They want to give you enough without sedating the child because yeah. we want them to be functional. And the only way that they know how much to give the child is this kind of feedback. So mm-hmm. your doctors are actually really relying on you to, yeah. to come back to them and go, okay, they're actually not doing what they need to be doing. Yep. So this comes to my first or my second point. First, pain is really important. Take it seriously. Right. Second is um, always ask about those side effects from mm-hmm. medications. So when you're in appointments, I think we always, I don't know about you, but when I'm in appointments, I want to know what this will do to help me. Like, yeah, definitely. This medication right. yep. will cause this. And then like all the other side effects, you're like, oh, don't worry about that. Yeah. It's But the side effects are actually what you actually need to be really aware mm. of because when they do come about, you want to be able to bring it up. Yep. And so the side effects of some of those medications you were talking about are one, irritability. Yep. Second, being really tired, sedating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so those two things already can make a child not like who yeah. they are. Yeah, right. You know what it's like when you're irritable yeah. or, you know, you haven't had enough sleep, you're feeling a little bit sedated, you know, you, you're not quite yourself. Mm. So you want to do stuff, but you don't have the energy for yeah. it. Correct. Um, and so those are the side effects of the medication. Yeah. And so in terms of knowing when to act, I think you know when to act when you know what the side effects are. And yeah. then it's important to then go back to the doctor. Yeah. As soon as you can. That's true. Or like the GP. Yeah. Because sometimes getting into those, yeah. those clinics are really hard. Correct. But this is why it comes back down to having a good GP that you can go back to and say, yeah. this is this is happening or another yeah. paediatrician you can see yeah. that knows the story. All right. Yeah. Because well, well, what did you guys do? Well, we, we were lucky to... Um, Look, I ruffled through all my paperwork to find the nurses because obviously <laughs> we can't get straight through to the yeah. rehab doctors. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we ru- I found... I came across his... The, her children's hospital nurse, yeah. a pediatric nurse or yes, something. Yes, yeah. yes. So yep. I called them. I had yep. to leave a message, obviously. Um, <laughs> yep. 
But she responded quite quickly, probably 24, to 20, 24 48 hours Amazing. turnaround. Yeah, great. Yeah, she got in touch with me and she yeah. said, look, she's referred the issues to our rehab doctors. Yeah. Um, and they're having a look at it and they'll get back to us yep. ASAP, yep. And which she did. She got back to yes. us. She gave me a call. We spoke about all the all my findings. Yeah. I gave it about six weeks Yeah, um, before, obviously, you know, alerting. Because uh-huh. obviously you don't want to give it a short period of time, no, right? No. Because it's kind of like see the yeah, effect. what the yeah. effect is. Yeah. So um, I left it to about six weeks. We were kind of like we had to wean him on it. Yep. Is that the word? Yeah, Morning. gradually. Yeah, yeah gradually. Yeah. That's the word. <laughs> gradually get yeah. him to yeah. um, the full dosage. dosage. Yeah. Um, and then we noticed that at full dosage, I gave it another couple of weeks. Yeah. And then obviously um, the side effects were very noticeable. Yeah. Yep. So at least we gave it time. Anyway, um, the doctors then decided that we needed, it, it's not a good thing that he's doing, that he, that the yes, effects, the yes. effects that I noticed is not good. Yes. So um, she told us that we needed to get to wean him off it yeah. gradually because yep. it's not one of those medications you that can't you can just, just stop. shut yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's the path that we took. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the that's the right path. It's it's number one noticing that there is a change, and mm. the only way you're going to notice the change is. You know, actually, you're the only person that will probably know the change the most because yeah. you're the gateway for so much information. You'll see True. them at home, yeah. but you also will get feedback from the teacher. Mm-hmm. You'll get feedback from the therapist, and you just you just sort of document that, especially when they're trying new medication. Just yeah. you want to document that. Um, just taking some notes. You know, it's week three, still really irritable. Yeah. It just gives you that evidence, and I love that you called the hospital. And yes, the nurses within each of the clinics, they're yeah. like such a go-to. I yeah. call them quite frequently and yeah, go, "Hey, right. we've we've seen this kid that this is happening to." Yeah. Um, they will have access to the doctors, but they have access to all their notes. They are so okay. skilled. They know so much information about the area yep. and they'll go, oh, this needs to be elevated. So they'll right. they'll bring it. Like the number of times when I was sitting in the hospital, when I was working there, you mm. would see like the nurses come with their big notes <laughs> and they'll go to the doctor and go, okay, you need to look at this. Right. And they'll call it a case okay. note where yep. they'll actually review it. And right. that's exactly what happened. Okay. And you provide the right feedback. Yeah. And you gradually take it off. The key is for a lot of medications when you go on them is you must talk to the doctor about yeah. side effects. But also if I notice them, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And then you will learn whether you can just, because the, the temptation would be, I don't want to give them medication anymore. Yeah, that's right. But then he, the, the effects of that will be really big. <laughs> yeah. um, but the, the impact is always about functional impact okay. in terms of how long to give. If if it's just as a family, you can't deal with it anymore because mm. it's just so intense yep. or they're not even functional at school, like, yep. You know, if it's four weeks out of school where they're not even focused versus, you know, six to eight weeks where they're not even part of it, that's yeah. a whole school term that yeah, they've just true. kind of been absent for. Yeah. And it's it's worth acting on that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's good. Um, yeah, nice things to consider. Yeah, and you did all the right things. And it's hard to know what to do, right? There's yeah, a lot to is. consider. Right. Yeah. And obviously um, now when it comes to obviously the doctors, the team, uh-huh. putting – Figuring out what kind of medication to give to the child. Yeah. You know, what what does that entail? Obviously, yeah. you know, taking into consideration the um the condition, mm. um, weight mm. measuring, uh, yeah. height measuring, all that yeah. is obviously yeah. right. Has yeah. to be compatible. Absolutely. I mean that's gonna be dosage, but a lot of it's going to be based on a on a proper assessment. Yeah. So an assessment of like how much tone do they have? Yep. It's as simple as even botulinum toxin injections. Mm. You, we, kids have them all the time. It can seem so familiar, but that is all very weight dependent in terms mm. of the dosage. Yep. But it's also like, where is the spasticity? Where can I make a difference? And you have to always assess before and after because there's no point yeah. giving medication right. otherwise. Uh, and so it is a whole team collaborative effort. Your yep. therapist will be able to contribute to that. And their teacher by, you know, by, yep. by you That's kind of right. going how they're concentrating or how they're actually able to participate. Yeah, yeah. That's always really important. See, it's incredible how valuable yeah, your no. information is. It's so much more valuable than I think a lot of parents give credit for. And, yeah, and we get through yeah. day to day not realising that what we do do yeah. actually does have a follow-on effect. It does, so, yeah. Um, you're yeah, kind of like really a, nice. yeah, you're like a nurse, you're a yeah. doctor, you're a therapist, you're all those things combined. And I yeah. think sometimes it's worth <laughs> just taking stock of how much you do know and... Mm. and um, Trusting. I Trusting think so. Your guts, right? I think Your so. Your mother's instincts is, yeah. I think, needs to um, 
yeah. and be realized. Yeah. yeah, and trust that. And and once you do, then when you make a call, people do trust that from you as well because mm. we rely on your information to yeah. go, oh, this is happening. Because yeah, right. we often only see them, whether we're doing home visits or you're going to the school, you're still only seeing a snapshot. Yeah, that's right. Right? You yeah. get the you might get the tantrum at the end of the day. Yeah. Oh, we didn't see that. <laughs> you saw it. What is that, right? right? Yeah. And then sometimes most of the kids go to the doctors. They're like best behavior. You're like, don't oh, be best man. behavior. I know. <laughs> Why can't you be <laughs> real? On, this is this is like no. Come on, show them. And yeah. then you know they they make a liar out of you. But you know people will always trust your word if you've been really consistent with that and you develop that relationship with your yeah. team. You know, yeah. it's a really um, beautiful team effort, and that's what it should look like. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. I think we've got quite good support. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It was nice that they. You know, obviously. Uh, responded quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. Because now he's back to his normal self. Well, yeah. talks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, that's, no, that's okay. <laughs> no, that's cool. No, that, that's well, thanks, that's a really Dana. good thing, and it sounds like you did everything really beautifully. But a great thing to bring up to just to support other families. Yep. Yeah. Thank sure. you. Hope that was great helps. to chat about. Yeah. yeah. Well, to all of our listeners, I hope you really enjoy that as well. And we'll talk to you all again next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 